Greetings everyone and welcome into the PCB webinar. My name is Gzim and I am the Portfolio Manager for IT Security at PCB. Uh, today I will be as an organizer of this webinar and uh, hopefully we will have uh, an interactive webinar with all the questions and your comments. Uh, in this webinar we will hear about the topic penetration testing or uh, vulnerability assessment. Uh, which one do you need and which one is more appropriate for your organization. Uh, the webinar will be presented by Mr. Steven Schwartz. He is a PCB certified trainer and uh, has a wide experience in the security field. Mr. Schwartz has been working for five years on, in the US Navy onboard nuclear submarine and uh, he was responsible for ensuring secure communication and administration of multiple secret, secret networks. He also has worked for uh, big companies like PwC and uh, McGraw Hill and currently he is a Director of Security Solution at Alpha Serve IT Technology. Uh, hopefully this webinar will help you understand the difference of penetration testing and the vulnerability assessment uh, for which one uh, does your company need to be assessed. If you have any question, you can write them at any time in question box in right hand control panel or you can use the option to raise your hand and we will answer to all of them accordingly. Please, Stephen, you may continue. Thank you, Gazim. Thank you, PCB, for having me. So, as Gazim said, my name is Steve Schwartz. I have been in the security industry for 10 plus years, starting in the Navy. Um, I have a couple of certifications out there, um, and particularly my ISO 27001 lead auditor, lead implementer. Um, I was a previous QSA, got my CISSP, and a couple others as well. With that being said, most of the interactions that I've had with organizations, there seems to be a large underlying uncertainty about the differences between vulnerability assessments, penetration testing, and then red teams as well. So I always try to inform my clients of the differences which they need and most of the time they don't really fully understand which they need. They just know that their auditor told them that they need to do this and they're being sold a vulnerability assessment which they think is a penetration test. and it's always just a lot of confusion. So with that being said, I wanted to outline the differences between vulnerability assessments, penetration tests, red team engagements. So on this slide, you can see that a pen test is typically used to verify vulnerabilities, whereas a vulnerability assessment just kind of depicts those vulnerabilities. A penetration test will tell you whether or not those vulnerabilities are exploitable and what you're able to gain from those systems that you're actually exploiting. Penetration tests provide additional assurance that vulnerability assessments typically miss. So in a penetration test or vice versa in a vulnerability assessment, you may see an anonymous FTP or a world readable NFS share but you don't know what information is on those systems. Whereas with a penetration test, they're going to go examine those systems. They're going to see if any sensitive information is on them. So a couple of war stories, these anonymous FTPs and world readable NFS shares have been treasure troves in my experience. On a single anonymous FTP I have found over 1.3 million credit card numbers, CVD codes, first name, last name, date of birth, social number, not date of birth, I'm sorry, um, first name, last name, um, date of expiration, also found over 44,000 people, social security numbers, first name, last name, date of birth, and then their co-signers information as well. So with a vulnerability assessment, you would just know that you have a anonymous FTP or a world readable NFS share. The penetration test goes ahead and actually verifies or looks into the type of information that's on them. Right? So another engagement that 
has been occurring more and more recently as organizations have been doing penetration testing for the last several years is red team engagement. So red team engagement is really more of a prolonged attack where it's almost a no holds barred match against your organization from an attacker's point of view. So the goal is to really just simulate what an attacker is going to do to gain access to your organization. So that could be anything from physical, social engineering, all the way to sending phishing emails. And then after they gain access, they're going to attempt to persist as long as possible and gain deeper insight into your network. So as the attacker gains this additional depth, they're going after a centralized goal. That goal is typically to gain access to some type of sensitive information that your organization deems is critical. So it really, when it comes down to it, organizations should start with a vulnerability assessment because if you're not doing anything today, a vulnerability assessment is going to tell you what you need to patch, where your system misconfigurations are, and it's really kind of the crux of the ability to um, continue to gain access as an attacker. There are some vulnerabilities or system um, functionality that will potentially allow an attacker to um, still gain access without a vulnerability, um, but that's that's something that you get into with penetration testing. So why should organizations be conducting vulnerability assessments, penetration tests? Um, so when you have either a large network footprint or a footprint that you fully don't understand what's been passed, what hasn't been passed, a vulnerability assessment is going to help you manage that, and it's going to help you prioritize which systems you should be patching and looking at first. Vulnerability assessments are typically also a lower cost because it's done with a scanning engine that is more of a repeatable process, and it can also give you a baseline based on your current vulnerabilities and based on what your organization really needs to kind of shore up. So determining the criticality of vulnerabilities in your organization is a little difficult to do if you don't actually go ahead and find out what's on those lower vulnerabilities. So there are several vulnerabilities that will come up as low. Um, anonymous FTP, world-readable NFS shares, are two of them, and based on a previous example, you know, those two vulnerabilities, or system misconfigurations actually, can provide a treasure trove of information to an attacker, and it's relatively easy to find those on a network with some simple um, NMAP scans, or maybe if you find an organizational wiki or something along those lines. So the penetration test, as we spoke before, it's really reviewing the misconfigurations, determining the actual overall risk from things that you're not able to identify with a vulnerability assessment. It's the manual testing of exploits, and it helps you reduce those false positives. So there are a lot of times that a vulnerability will say exploit available, but that exploit needs to be heavily modified for it to actually be um, used on the target system. Because maybe the exploit that's available was built for the French version of Windows instead of the American version or Chinese version, whichever it might be. Right? So most of your lower level attackers are going to either have the knowledge to do that or your high um, reward um, <clears throat> or your, I guess, your attackers that are looking for the low-hanging fruit, right, they're not going to take the time to do that. So if you're kind of meeting those baselines and 
you have, uh, or it would just take more to be able to exploit that. You know, exploits that are available for everything are a lot easier to use and it's easier for the average um, script kitty to be able to kind of exploit them. Um, penetration testing, it's taken from a malicious entity's point of view um, going after a system, right? So when they're going after your system, they have an end goal. In the last few years, most of those end goals have been really gaining domain administrator to a network, whereas the penetration tests that we conduct are more geared towards what that organization deems as critical. So it's got a little bit of that red team aspect to it, but it's not a prolonged attack. They know that we're doing it, and we're just looking to really give them the value that they're looking for based on the assessment. So organizations need to be equipped to ask their vendors the right questions. So unless you kind of know what those are and you understand their methodology, you're not going to really know whether you're getting a vulnerability assessment penetration test, maybe you need to have both done, right? So typically you want to be able to ask your vendor, what is the goal of your assessment, right? So the vendor will typically tell you to either exploit all vulnerabilities that we find during a vulnerability assessment and see what type of compromise we can actually, um, what, what levels we're able to compromise that system to. Or they may ask, what is your methodology for your penetration test? Right, so if somebody says that they start out with a vulnerability assessment and then move on to a penetration test from there, right now that penetration tester already has an upper hand. He already knows what systems are exploitable and it makes it that much easier for them to potentially be able to gain whatever the end goal is that they're looking for. Another question to ask is, how do they determine what the overall risk is, right? So are they using CVSS scores to determine risk? Are they using what your assets are classified as versus the exploitability? versus the CVSS score to classify risk. And based on their answers, you'll really be able to determine whether or not they conceptually understand what risk is to your organization, right? So if you're looking at your high-valued assets, if they're able to gain access to those through some type of exploit, or through some misconfiguration, then that's obviously a higher risk than if they're able to compromise an endpoint, a client system, right? So, or a system that's not on the domain, right? You see that a lot while you're conducting testing that you exploit a system, it's Windows XP, um, end of life, and it's not on the domain. So from there, it makes pivoting into the actual um, domain environment somewhat useless. You could start sniffing traffic, things like that, or you could use it as a jump box, but um, it's not giving you that additional level to continue to gain deeper. So it's, it's important to understand what the attacker or vendor's methodology is when analyzing the risks for that assessment. Another good question to ask is who's going to be doing the testing, right? What types of certifications does the tester have? What types of certifications does their team have? What is their overall experience? What types of organizations have they previously tested in, right? And Based on that, you know, kind of what are you looking for, right? If you're looking for somebody that does 
Azure testing, if they've never tested in a cloud environment, it most likely will not end that well um, for the engagement. Whereas if you're looking for an infrastructure test, if they have only tested in a cloud environment, then it may be more difficult for that attacker to actually test as well. Right? Or if they've only done web applications and you have them trying to do an infrastructure test, that will not end well either. So understanding who the vendor is and the previous experiences that they have in testing in these different types of environments is extremely critical. So in addition to those previous comments, um, asking them the methodology they use, right, so typically there's an, an attack kill chain that an organization will use of tried and true attacks. Um, some organizations start with metasploit exploits, some start with um, a little bit more of sniffing and spoofing responses for protocols such as LLM and R and FIOS. Um, you know, so understanding their approach will really help you understand kind of what they're looking to do and how they're going to do it. So being able to speak about the value that these assessments are going to provide is extremely important to upper management. Right, so most organizations just want to have a check in the box. They want to be able to tell the F SEC, FINRA, or um, their auditors from the AICTA, you know, we've done this, here's our assessment, and more often than not, um, those auditors may not know what they're looking for, but if there is a chance that they do know and they've done them before, they completely understand what the differences are, if you've received a vulnerability assessment when you were supposed to have a penetration test done, that could result in potentially a qualified opinion, a nonconformity, or whatever else it may be that it kind of makes it into your audit report, it gets reported to the board, um, you know, and whoever the vendor was that you were paying to do that assessment, you didn't get that value that they told you. So with that, I think that we have pretty much wrapped up the majority of the content that we're going to go over. We'd like to open up to any questions that potential participants uh, may have. Eugene? Okay, thank you, Steve, for your presentation. Yes, we do have some questions. Uh, the first uh, question is, uh, uh, as for the uh, methodologies, most of them are uh, pretty similar, like OSSTMM, OISSG, and others. Thus, this, uh, is it real important which methodologies uh, the team use? Uh, moreover, usually you can't uh, strictly follow meta methodologies. So what do you recommend? So I don't think that the actual methodology that they're using is as important as the approach and the way that they're using that methodology. Right? If you look at your pen test framework, it goes all the way down to tell you which type of system you should be testing with. You don't necessarily need to be testing with a OSX platform, but for a majority of testing it makes it a bit easier and it is much easier to SSH in the boxes, everything like that. Right? But at the end of the day, it's really the approach. It's how are you going through the kill chain and are you starting with a vulnerability assessment and then trying to um, piecemeal exploits on top of that? Or are you looking at it more from an attacker's point of view and being able to um, help that organization really understand what a potential attacker would be able to do if they were to gain access to your internal network or what a malicious insider might be able to do if they were to gain access into your network. So 
Um, based on that comment or question, right, I agree that the necessary framework or methodology that you're using isn't as important as the actual implementation and approach that you're using. And each pen test is going to be different because you're going to have different ending goals in addition to you're going to see different things on the network that are going to allow you to um, continue to move forward and pivot, right? So based on, it's really just based on your approach. Okay, the second question is much more general and ask uh, what is the most difficult and uh, important part that we should pay attention uh, while uh, performing pen testing? So, I mean, the part that uh, might influence the, the result after the process. So, when performing penetration testing, I think that the most important part is really that you're operating under do no harm, right? So you don't want to be trying to exploit vulnerabilities that cause the denial of service on their AS400, which looks for fraud, right? Or you don't want to flood their switch with packets in the middle of the day when they're trying to, um, you know, process credit card transactions. So really operating under that do no harm, um, you know, and making sure that the exploits that you're using have been tried and true, you've verified them, you have your own, um, you've compiled the ones that you're using, so you're not using a malicious exploit that may have a backdoor um, implemented in it. You know, just understanding the tools that you're using and understanding how they work, why they work, and really just being able to um, kind of know what's under the hood, right? So I'm not saying that you need to have developed every single exploit out there or be using a customized exploit kit, but you should know how they work. You should know the OSI model and how that works, which types of attacks you're using and where they're hitting on that OSI model, um, right? So I think that's what I would view as a the important things. Okay, and the last question is uh, how do we qualify if a specific part is uh, vulnerable when we perform vulnerability, vulnerability assessment? Uh, are there any values that comes after uh, we perform this process? So typically um, most of your commercial vulnerability scanners and even the open source ones um, have a line that says that that vulnerability is exploitable. Um, if you look at the central vulnerability database, um, you know, that will also tell you whether or not that exploit is, or that vulnerability is exploitable. And in addition to that, um, a vulnerability assessment is not meant to determine whether or not you were able to exploit that vulnerability. The purpose of the vulnerability assessment is to tell you which systems haven't been patched, which systems have misconfigurations, and try and give you a prioritized approach to the patching and the remediation of those vulnerabilities. Right? And then that's where penetration testing provides a little additional value. Um, in the aspect of vulnerability management because it allows you to see what what types of information are on misconfigurations or what you're able to gain access to based on systems that are exploitable and things like that. Okay, uh, thank you Steve for sharing this highly informative presentation and uh, also want to thank all the attendees for joining us live today. I uh, strongly hope you had the chance to learn uh, many new things today. I suggest you take time and uh, see our future webinars that we will uh, be hosting. Uh, next uh, Wednesday we will host a webinar topic which is called uh, Cybersecurity on uh, Business Resilience. Uh, you can also take time and visit our uh, website www.pcb.com on the uh, the webinar section and uh, register for our future webinars. Thank you once again and hope to meet you soon in our future webinars.